was saying, you know, is it an opportunity to show everyone that you've got a real claim to finish second in the league? I think it's a difficult ask to finish second, but you know, while we're in, a, in amongst it, then yeah, it's just the next game. The three points are important because we've got Aberdeen then at the weekend. And not, you know, it's obviously a big game in between two big clubs. You know, there's a rivalry there now, obviously established since the, the cup final, and with both teams being in the championship in the recent history. So it's good that. We've got a big crowd coming, sell out again, so we're very much looking forward to it. What have you made of what's been happening at Rangers in the last few months? Because if you look at where they are in the league, they're actually doing okay at the moment, but I mean, there's been a lot of turmoil off the club, obviously they've tried to get down to McInnes and whatnot. How would you look at it from the outside looking in? I'm just saying the times, you know, I mean, five, ten years ago, people would slap their hand off to be the Rangers manager. Um, so I, I, it's difficult for me to comment because I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. I, like I said already, I was surprised Derek turned, turned it down, but there are obviously personal and, and other reasons for him not taking the job. It is a bit peculiar, you know, a club of that st standard and, and stature, that it has taken so long for them to get a manager in. But I think they will feel it's important that you know, going forward, it's not a short-term fix. This one is it's going to be a long-term one. Is it maybe an indication that they're not perhaps the draw that they once were? You said it was a sign of the times. And yeah. Previously, I, I can only think of two managers that have ever turned down the old firm that were working in Scotland, Alec Ferguson and Jim McLean. I, mean, I think it stunned everyone that Derek didn't take it. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm surprised, I have to say. Uh, but the other thing is, you know, you refer to the, the Board of Rangers, they back Kishinia pretty well in the summer. You know, and there's no other club outside of Celtic can can do that. Um, so, like I said, Derek has his own reasons for it. He seems pretty happy and stable at Aberdeen, and maybe he felt he was going into the unknown, really, or an unstable environment. When you're a manager and you've been through what what he's been through, um, when you had a difficult time in Bristol City behind the scenes with financial problems, you learn from that. You don't want to go in there again and start firefighting. And well, he, you know, he's in a stable position where he is and has done a brilliant job there. Then you can understand why he doesn't want to leave that because he's obviously enjoying what he's doing. Did the club, when you, when you look at your team and you set your team up for a game against Rangers, did they maybe not hold as much fear as they once did? It used to be that the games against Celtic and Rangers, you know, they would be by far away the biggest games for a lot of the clubs in this league. Has that maybe lessened a little bit in, in recent I know they've been out of the league, but even, yeah, since, they've been back, even since they've been back in it. Yeah, but they're still in, in their embryonic stages of, of building to try and get back to where they were, so that takes a bit of time. We respect them. I think it's going to be a difficult game. They're second in the league, but they should be second in the league, you know, with the resources that they have. So, um, they're off the back of three wins, so maybe they're starting to find a consistency of performance. We have to, you know, be mindful of that and not get carried away by. The comeback on on Sunday was it was great. It's done now, and we have to go into the game thinking we can win this game. And we're at home, um, full house, so we must take every advantage that we can. What about their team? Their actual team on the pitch. What areas of their team do you think you can exploit? I'm not going to sit here. I'm not Celtic, you know. But yeah, but I'm not going to sit here and give you headlines, Paul. You know, I'm not going to sit here and go, well, they're, they're weak here. I'm not going to criticise yeah. any aspect of the Rangers team at all. The second. They've had two great wins against Aberdeen, followed up with another win. So, you know, they'll be favourites going into the game. You mentioned the, uh, the big atmosphere that there will be and that there has been in the weekend. Why is it, do you think, that your players relish those big occasions more so than some of the other matches? That's just natural. You know, it's just a natural state of events. Subconsciously, you, you read your game at times, you don't mean to, but you just find that extra bit of energy or that extra bit of motivation. These games take care of themselves in terms of self-motivating the team. Um, but what, what you want is a cons and to be fair, in the, in the majority of the games the teams play well. So I can't be overcritical of them saving themselves for big games and not doing the same for what would be perceived not so big a game. So I think, um, I think it's just natural with the atmosphere and the energy and under the lights that you know, straight away they'll be switched on. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Ollie made a big impact off the bench on Sunday. 
is he pushing to, to get a start? No it? question, yeah, no question. He's been excellent and he's improving. And he's got a real good qualities and attributes about him. And you know, he, he took his goal brilliantly at the weekend, gave us a lift. So I'm absolutely delighted with the progress he's making. And um, not far away at all. And Brandon, did he limp off with a hamstring problem? He got a kick on the calf that just sort of tightened up, so he should be okay. Um, Stephen Whitaker's still a bit sore. He's had an ongoing pelvic problem. Um, so he was feeling that as he fatigued. He hasn't trained a lot, like, you know, so it was a big ask for him to go in there. Um, Danny Swanson's back in the squad now. Um, McGregor, obviously. So David Gray hopefully will train this week as well. So we're getting a few back as well. How's Leo? Is he still getting back to go, Yeah, well, I mean, he's only back out training in the last week or so. So, I would like him to get maybe some games under his belt, even with the development team, if we can. Or it's difficult at the minute with the pitches, you know. But it's it's hard to get, you know, a concerted period of, of training into them at the minute. But, um, yeah, he's, he's still got a, a bit to do. If I offered you the position that you're in at the start of the season, position you're in just now in December the 12th, would you have taken it? Yes. Well, three points off second place, no, no question. And you've exceeded your expectations? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, you can look at other teams having problems. You know, I've been very, very pleased with us. Um, that takes a lot to please me, as you know. Um, so I just want that consistency now. We've got another five, six games this month. It's a big ask for the squad, but um, now I'm very, very pleased with where we are.